When we look at that, okay, we have polar covalent bonds and we have nonpolar covalent bonds. And so if we're looking at this CH4, okay, there's a sharing of electrons, but it's an equal sharing of electrons. And so what I mean by that is if we look at this, so we'll make this purple, we're gonna make this, this little purple guy, okay? Let's make it the blue guy. We'll make it this little blue guy. We'll say this little blue guy is the electron. And so the spacing between the electron, the draw back and forth between one hydrogen, the carbon, and one of the, you know, each electron here, okay, the sharing there, that is equal. So it's, so, so in other words, carbon is not pulling it closer to it, and hydrogen is not pulling it closer to it. That is called nonpolar covalent bonding. Polar covalent bonding, let's say we have water. It's gonna be our great example. The example of water for polar covalent bonds is this. So now we're gonna make this oxygen, we're gonna keep this hydrogen, and we're gonna keep the little blue guy as the uh, electron, okay? We have something called polar covalent bonds that happen here. And what it does is oxygen is electronegative, and uh, that's explained in my notes for my anatomy students, is essentially when you have six or seven electrons in the outer shell, so you're almost complete. If you have one or two, you're considered electropositive. And so hydrogen has one in its outer shell, so it's considered electropositive. But what's going to happen is oxygen is gonna have a greater pull on this electron. Remember, I said the characteristic of these elements is they want to complete the outer shell. They have a propensity to complete the outer shell. Well, is it easier for oxygen to get rid of uh, six of its electrons to complete the outer shell or to gain two? It's easier to gain two. So it has a propensity to draw electrons pretty strongly to it. And so what we're going to have happen is, instead of equally sharing like we saw before, when we're looking at like the CH4, okay, the, the methane, we have in H2O, which is water, we have the oxygen, okay, sharing uh, an electron with one hydrogen, and on the other side it's gonna share another, okay? So remember, oxygen has six in its outer shell, so it's going to need two, and then hydrogen has one. So, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have an unequal sharing of electrons. So if you look, the little blue guy is my electron, it's closer to the oxygen than it is to the hydrogen. So the pull, on this, on this polar covalent bond is that we're drawing the hydrogen closer to the oxygen, I'm sorry, the electron closer to the oxygen than to the hydrogen. What does that do? It creates a slight negative pull, because remember, electrons are negative, right? So it creates a slight negative pull at the oxygen and a slight positive pull at the hydrogen. That's why it's called polar covalent bonding. Now the last thing I'll say about that is when we have these bonds, Okay, so we have this polar covalent bond uh, for like say H2O. Well, each H2O, the two H's are bound to the oxygen by polar covalent bonds creating poles. Negative poles at the oxygen, positive poles at the hydrogen. Well, what's going to happen is there's a principle that negatives attract. So when we talk about electrical gradients, charges always want to move to the opposite charge they're always attracted to the opposite charge it's kind of like a magnet if you turn it around it, it will repel if you turn it where the opposite charges are then it will attract and so opposite charges will attract now if you have a slight positive pull at the at an oxygen of one water okay and a slight negative pull of the hydrogen of another it creates a bond. It's kind of a weak bond, but it creates a little bit of a bond because those opposites, the slight positive pole with the oxygen, the slight negative pole with the hydrogen, are drawing towards each other, they're attracting each other, okay? That is called a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds are about 5% as strong as covalent bonds. They're pretty weak overall, but again, if you have lots of these now, now it becomes strong. Here's my example. I fill a bathtub with water, I run my hand through the tub, I am not breaking H2O's. What, am I, what I am doing is I'm breaking the hydrogen bonds between H2O's, so those are easy to break. However, if you look at uh, you know, an ocean where it hits into the rocks, it'll actually dig away at the rocks, right? So when the bonds are multiplied, right, when there's lots of hydrogen bonds, it becomes very strong. In fact, in between the strands of DNA, you have hydrogen bonds as well, and because there's so many of them, that becomes a very strong structure. So, polar covalent bonds are necessary to generate the slight negative and slight positive poles 
that are going to draw each other together to create hydrogen bonding. So water again is a great example because the oxygen of one uh, is bound, the hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of another because of the poles drawing towards each other. Hopefully that makes sense. That's a lot of info. Stay strong. I'll see you next time.